food, a finale, and some reggae. We've Ooh. got that and much more in today's Puro Picks. Stephanie Guerra joins us with Puro rhymes with flinche. <laughs> we can't say it, though. Uh, we can't say it. But I love the fact that you bring us stuff that people, I mean, you need to be in the know to know about this. And so I'm glad we can let our right. audience know. If you know, you know. You have to watch a case at 6.30 on Fridays to find I, out. This is my favorite. <laughs> uh, sorry. But this is my favorite 6.30 segment all week There long you go. Because you always have something that I haven't heard anywhere else. I appreciate that. Yeah. So we're going to talk reggae first. Yes. So um, tomorrow is the 2023 San Antonio Reggae Festival at Rosedale Park. This reggae festival has been going on for a very long time, so they know their music and they bring the headliners. Um, tomorrow, they're featuring Alex Rebel Marley and a ton of other performers from 2 to 11 p.m. Um, it's really great. It's family fun. Um, I think kids under maybe like 10 or 11 are actually free. Um, but, you know, all the music, all the meat, all the food, and, and it's at Rosedale Park. It's like yeah. iconic to have yeah. anything yeah. at Rosedale Very Park. Very easy to Love get that. to as yeah. well. All right, and uh, okay, I'm assuming <laughs> that once you do that, you might want some food. <laughs> yeah, so um, there's, we're going all over the city this weekend. So okay. Rosedale Park and the Inner yeah. West Side. Out in Hell Lotus, there is a venue, a beautiful venue called Josabi's. They have concerts there, they have weddings there. I've, I've been there. Beautiful yeah. event venue. They've been adding on to it. They're showing off Josabi's and all of their neighbors tomorrow with a taste of Josabi's food festival. Doors open at five o'clock. They also have a discount for you on tickets if you bring a canned food donation that goes back to San Antonio Food Bank. But they also have great music tomorrow along with the food. Uh, George DeVore, Paco Estrada, and Faya, which we've talked about before, a little yeah. punk rock band. Um, but it's a lot of family fun, and it's on the north side of town. So we have people all over watching, and we get to run into them when we're out. But it's good to see what's going on everywhere. And it, it sounds like the music is very different yes. at that particular thing. I mean, they have yes. a little bit of, a little bit of everything. All three uh, bands are all different genres yeah. of music. Um, and it really is fun for all ages. Josabi's, um, the owners, they take care of everybody and make sure everyone has a great time. All right, and Josabi's is going to be the provider of all of the food? They have different restaurants ah, that are going to be featuring their it. food there. Yes. So you get, it's kind of like, you know, the Fiesta events, like a taste yes. of. Um, so you get a taste of Josabi's. So you'll get a bunch of different food um, and drink options tomorrow with your ticket price. Yeah, so now we're gonna head to King William. We're gonna head to Southtown <laughs> for the brick, right? The Friendship we Market love is brick. what it's called? Yes, yeah. Um, so Sunday is International Friendship Day. Oh, I'm so glad we're friends I now. Know. We can That's celebrate great. together. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will say growing up, I never thought um, I would be friends with Steve Spreister and Ursula Perry. So <laughs> well, this is amazing. there you go. <laughs> yeah. Goals. Yeah. Because you all are amazing. Thank yes. You. Um, so there's a friendship market tomorrow morning hosted by Que Bonita Crafts and Designer. And they've got a great... Um, lineup of you know 30 plus vendors um celebrating friends so all of the arts and crafts and jewelry will be themed around friends i bet you you'll see some golden girls you know yeah. all kinds of things i know myra's not here but yeah. we can throw that in for yeah. her yeah she's watching at home she knows <laughs> but, and it's but yes. inside and it's indoors yeah. yes we're continuing to keep up with indoor events because it is so hot Right, and it will be hot tomorrow, <laughs> we guarantee it. Unfortunately. <laughs> okay, the, this one's for Steve, the final oldies -y chill at yes. the squeeze box. So, we've been talking a lot about Not the North St. Mary's. <laughs> no, no, I mean, these are, this is, this is I, the squeeze box is going out of business. Yes, so we've talked a lot about the North St. Mary's Strip yes. and all of the troubles that they've been going through. Squeezebox has been around for seven years, um, and unfortunately, just due to you know the last three years of different issues, construction, um, yeah. closures, COVID, everything, they have made the decision that this is the, the, the end of their run. Aww. It's been a good run, seven years is a long time for a bar, but it's gonna be an awesome celebration on Sunday night with San Antonio's own Sunny Ozuna, um, with, of Sunny and the Sunliners, classic musician, Chicano soul, but he's still around, he's not yeah. that, he's not old. He's still performing, great music. People, obviously 21 and up can go, 
LA 45 is another great San Antonio band, all vinyl DJ set. And of course, you can't have a finale without mariachis. So you cannot. it's going to be a really fun party Sunday night I at imagine this Imagine there'll box. be some tears. This, <laughs> you know, I, it's always yes. sad when, when someone yeah. has to close their doors. One of Sunny Ozuna's songs is actually Smile Now, Cry Later. <laughs> so it's a good thing. Appropriate. <laughs> all right, we missed one, the Paper Trail essay at the Rock oh. Box from 11 till 7 on Sunday. Yes, and you cannot miss Paper Trail. Paper Trail is one of my favorite events all year long, and it is probably one of the top places I buy local art and prints okay. for my home. So um, they have, I, I don't know, maybe close to like 100 vendors of printmaking um, styles. So you will find everything from like lowbrow to highbrow to DIY in between. Um, it's at the Rock Box over on East Houston Street, 11 to 7. It's a great event. Be ready to shop. So many prints that are just you can see the San Antonio pouring out of the artist. Kind of over you know, where the Spaghetti great. Warehouse used to be to give you yes. an idea where you It is near see. the old Spaghetti Warehouse. By the way, somebody please buy that and do something with it. I know. <laughs> Every time I go by there, I'm like, I can't believe somebody didn't, because it's a great building. Oh, yeah. Maybe the squeeze yeah. box will move over there. <laughs> I think that he has other plans. He does. Right have, now. You yeah. should definitely keep up with squeeze box social media. Their owner is opening a couple new bars, ah. yeah. um, and they are opening very soon. He's a busy guy. All right, <laughs> and finally, we've got a film festival. Yeah. Yes. This Not is, just a film festival. This is the yes. film festival. San Antonio film. film Festival is now in its 29th year, um, which is awesome. The organizer, Adam Rocha, you know, like they have they have put together a great lineup of films. They have everybody from young filmmakers that are in high school programs to indie filmmakers, documentaries, and then, you know, more well-known filmmakers that are presenting in the film festival and it's awesome because it's also all over the city so it's downtown at the Tobin Center and the Radius Center and then at Santico's Palladium over up on the north side as well but you will see films all week long from August 1st to August 8th um, and it's a really really great cause you're going you're we know the workers and the writers yeah. are on strike right now. This is where it's important to start at the local level, support your support your local filmmakers. Um, and it's just great to get out and see new stuff by people you may know. Yeah. And some of these are going to end up winning awards, oh, yeah. not only here, but, but elsewhere throughout Always. the country. Yes. Uh, we, you know, we recently talked about um, Cine Festival, which mm -hmm. is based on Latino filmmakers. Um, you know, SA Film Festival is a great indie film festival that has been around forever that does also see local filmmakers rise up to bigger screens. So it's really important. Get out, enjoy, support it. No matter where you live in town. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, we've got reggae, <laughs> no you've got excuses. food, you've got the finale. <laughs> like I said, if, the, if you think there's nothing going on in San Antonio, you're not watching <laughs> That's right. Stephanie on Fridays. Keep it booed. Or following you on and social media. And pay attention. Media. That's when right. are we going to sleep? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, we're going to be too busy. We don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's your new logo. Yeah. Stephanie never sleeps. Thank you. Great to see you. Yes, have a great weekend, everyone. You too. All right, we'll be right back. And here's your 60-second recap. The Bear County Sheriff's Office releasing a mock-up of this tattoo that was on the back of a torso found in a duffel bag last week. The bag found in a field on the southwest side. If you have any information, call BCSO at 210-335-6000. The San Antonio Police investigating a drive-by shooting on Mid-Crown Drive near Walsham. SAPD says a man in his 20s shot in the arm. Officers say the suspect or suspects drove away in a blue vehicle. A Crime Stoppers tip helping SAPD make an arrest in a murder case. 23-year-old Seth Angel Arrocha Garcia taken into custody and charged with murder. He's accused of killing Eloy Hernandez at the beginning of June on West Laurel Street. Garcia's bond set at $250,000. The San Antonio Police Department investigating a shooting outside of a Southside home happened early this morning on Spots Street. Officers say the man shot in both legs while he was outside of his home. The victim says he didn't know the shooter. The suspect hasn't been found. That's your 60 second recap. And here's your live cam showing pretty much the same picture we've had all day long. It's it's almost a static shot at this point. And you can see a little bit of haze off in the distance. We'll talk about that African dust in a little bit, causing that haze along with air quality, if there are any issues uh, from the dust for air quality and where the moisture is and where it's going to be in terms of rainfall over the next seven days and an update to our high temperature in just a bit. All right, so we broke a streak. We didn't hit 100 today, but something tells me 
We're going to start a new one. Yeah. Wait. Maybe tomorrow. Uh -oh. Wait. Uh oh. Yeah. I was on the chat with the National oh, Weather Service. He's Bob. Do I it. know. I know. Bob at the National Weather Service office there up in New Braunfels just sent out a note, um, basically saying, "Hey, it looks like we did just." Briefly hit it, oh. Bob. In, in between yeah, Bob. observations, we have to have right? A talk with Bob. It's not Bob's fault. Bob at the <laughs> office. You know the <laughs> observations come in at certain times, but in between those times, sometimes you can actually, you know, have a brief uptick, and that's what we had. We need. <laughs> Bob, you're going to HR. <laughs> it's not Bob's fault, everybody. We love Bob. It's all about blaming the messenger, you know. <laughs> well, blame me then. All right. All right. 100 degrees. That's our new update today. We were so close. I mean, we probably hit 100 for two or three minutes is probably what it was, but still counts. So now it's five days in a row that we've had 100 degrees, and that makes it 33 100 degree days so far this year. And by this time last year, we had 48. As for the streak, we're at five right now. But previously, up until Sunday, we had 15 consecutive 100, 100 degree days. That was from July 8th to the 22nd. And we're starting our new run for 21. And we're barely keeping it alive. 21 obviously being the record. Bit of haze in the sky. Some of the African dust streaming overhead. Light to moderate amounts today. Saturday, 3 p.m. It really starts to thin out a bit. Very light in nature. And then by Sunday, it's gone. And I really don't think we... Uh, are going to have it overhead again for the foreseeable future thereafter. Notice how we get into this time next week and nothing even near us, not even really out over the Gulf of Mexico with that dust that's carried westward by the trade winds every summer gets lifted, lofted up into the atmosphere from the Saharan dust desert and then pushed across the Atlantic up in the air. It can get up to tens of thousands of feet high in the sky, by the way. All right, let's talk about our air quality. Because of the dust in the air, you know, sometimes it can impact air quality, especially for sensitive folks. That's not really the case this go around. It was suspended and light enough in nature. So our air quality was what it typically is in the moderate levels. You go from good to moderate to unhealthy to very unhealthy to hazardous. We were moderate again today. Most recent measurements from our air quality monitoring stations are all in that yellow zone. Green's the best, next is yellow, then it goes into orange and red uh, for severity. Now, speaking of colors, oranges and reds, that's what we don't like on this map, the drought monitor. Nearly half of Texas considered in drought, the worst of it right here in our neck of the woods, northwestern Bear County or even northern Bear County and the Texas Hill Country. That's where we have the bullseye of extreme and exceptional drought compared to five weeks ago. And clearly that drought is expanding. Look at that current drought monitor again. We're drying out everywhere, even where we didn't have drought before. It's becoming abnormally dry. So the upper level high, it's centered just to the west of us, but it's going to be moving over Texas again. There's a disturbance down to the south that's got some shower activity down in the valley, but it's just going to throw some clouds our way. That's all it's going to do. I think some high clouds could cycle in from the, the blow off clouds from those thunderstorms being pushed our way. As for real rainfall and the moisture and the potential over the next seven days, there is a big hole over Texas because of that heat high that's going to be settling back in. A lot of rain elsewhere, just not here. If you're headed to the beach and bay this weekend, highs and low to mid 90s is typical. On the bay side, just a light chop, southeast wind at 5 to 15. The gulf side sees at 2 feet. By the way, the water temperature, mid 80s to near 90 degrees. And by the way, our streak looks like it's going to continue. Aww. Yeah, 100 tomorrow, then 103 by next week. I never did like Bob. Oh, stop it. Bob's great. Okay. I'll reconsider. Yeah, we take it back, Bob. <laughs> We'll be right back with the buzz. To the buzz now and a group of deputies came to the aid of man's best friend in Dunn County, Wisconsin Wednesday. All caught on body cam video. The sheriff's office says a deputy responded to a call about a seven week old Great Pyrenees puppy that was stuck in a culvert. Now the deputy was unable to rescue the little guy with the tools that he had on hand, but another responding deputy and sergeant got a catch pole and that did the trip. They were able to grab the little puppy's leg with it, pulled him out and quickly handed him over to his relieved owners. Love that. All right, when it is this hot. Even animals need a way to beat the heat, and that's why Stone Zoo and Franklin Park Zoo in Massachusetts making some cool treats for their little fellas. Yeah, gorillas get iced diluted fruit juice with berries. 
Ring-tailed lemurs get frozen treats with what they consider delicious bugs. Yum. According to the zoos, some animals also receive misters and many receive careful monitoring. A little mister there oh, for the ostrich. Training on the yeah. ostriches. Yeah. All right, the Mega Millions jackpot has now grown to about $910 million. The next drawing tonight, around 10 12. The prize has a cash option of just $462.2 million. And of course, we'll have the numbers tonight on the night beat. And if they match mine, I'm not. Gonna you won't the be show. there. It okay. comes after no one matched the winning numbers at Tuesday night's drawing. This is the fifth largest jackpot in Mega Millions history. All right. We'll be right back. Before we go, I want to bring you a clarification. At the beginning of this newscast, we brought you a story on a stolen RV out of Holotus. Well, we misstated the suspect's middle name and age based on our mistake in confirming the jail records. Uh, that suspect erroneously booked initially under that name at first, but the suspect is actually 43-year-old Joseph James Whitaker. We apologize. See you on the night beat at 10.